What's up everyone? I got a quick build guide for you today. We're going to talk about how you can create Raiden, the God of Thunder in Elden Ring. This build is pretty easy to get started. Uh, I recommend you either start as a prophet or a samurai. That way you have one of the two weapons that you're going to need to make this build work. If you don't start as either one of these classes, that's okay because you can grab both of them in the starting area anyway. The Uchigatana you can grab in the catacombs right there in Limgrave, and then the Finger Seal, as soon as you make it to Round Table Hold, you can buy it from the Twin Maiden Husks. And you're also gonna need an Ash of War to make this build work. Uh, you can grab Golden Vow from a Knight right in the starting area, and that's right by the catacombs where you'll grab the Uchigatana, so that's an easy thing to pick up while you're there. And then the last thing you're gonna need is the Dragon Cult Prayer Book. Uh, this can be a little bit challenging if you're grabbing it right at the start of the game. You get it off of a knight that roams around just south of the Artist Shack in the Urny of the Lakes. An easy way that you can grab this is just mount up on Torrent and ride by him, hitting him each time you pass by. He's usually too slow to hit you, and so you just do this a couple times and you can whittle him down. And then once you get that prayer book, bring it to Corin at the round table hold and he'll teach you a couple of the spells that you need for this build. All right, so now that we've got our two weapons and the Dragon Cult prayer book, the main spells that you're gonna be using are Lightning Spear and Honed Bolt. You can pick up Lightning Strike and Weeping Peninsula, which is a good AOE spell for those situations that you need it. Although most of the time you're just gonna be single targeting spells with either Lightning Spear or Honed Bolt. Lightning Spear is a charge spell that can deal pretty good damage once you have your build going. And Hone Bolt, you'll use more for tougher enemies that you need to multiple cast on because once you do the initial cast, you can repeatedly cast it over and over to get really high damage. The limiting factor there is gonna be more so your stamina than your FP because it doesn't use too much FP, but it does drain your stamina. So you'll have to take a break while casting it. One other spell that can be useful for defense is the Dragon Bolt Blessing. This isn't found until later once you reach the Altus Plateau, uh, but if you want to run up there and grab it real quick, you can. It does a pretty good job at deflecting enemy blows, so it can break up any combos that they might use against you, which can really save you at certain points. Uh, it's not going to increase your damage at all, but it's more of a survivability buff, and it's it's really only useful for lighter attacks, so you're not really going to use it much against bosses, because most of their attacks are too strong for this to help you out any. Eventually, when you reach the capital city, you're going to want to pick up the Sanctified Wet Blade. The thing that makes this build work is enchanting your sword uh, with sacred damage, because that's going to scale off of your faith. And once you do that, you can use a wide variety of Ashes of War, just as long as you can enchant it as a sacred blade so it gets that scaling from faith. Uh, once you do this, you're going to want to make sure that you have the Golden Vow incantation as well, so you no longer have to cast it off of your weapon skill. Golden Vow is going to be really important because not only does it increase your survivability, but also in improves your attack power with your weapon and it improves your spell damage as well of course it's going to give your weapon the sacred affinity so that it scales off of your faith let's talk about stats for a minute so your primary stat is going to be faith this is where all of your damage is going to come from you're going to need just a couple points in mind so that you know you're not running out of fp during fights and then vigor so that you can survive through those fights and Endurance I, I didn't really touch, though I do think as I level past 50 I'll add a couple points in here so that I can continue to cast Honed Bolt more than three or four times, because uh, I find that that's quite useful against bosses after you know, you've got some distance between them, you just cast Honed Bolt a bunch of times and really build up damage. And right now the only thing holding you back from casting it more is your Endurance. And your Strength and Dexterity, you only need enough points to use the Uchigatana, which is why I'm using this weapon and not a different one. The Uchigatana and the Nagakiba are the only two that you can enchant with an Ash of War. And the Nagakiba's requirements are a little bit too high at this point, so that's why we're sticking with the Uchigatana, because its requirements and strength and dexterity are pretty low. For your mixed physic, you're probably going to want to pick up the Lightning Shrouding Crack tier and the Faith Knot Crystal tier. Uh, I usually drink these right before a boss fight or a tough enemy. This is going to boost your damage significantly. This combined with your talismans and golden vow is going to make your lightning spells hit really hard. 
As you move forward into the game, some other spells will open up to you that we don't really have access to yet. All right, let's talk talismans for a second. So I tested all of the relevant talismans for this build, and both the Two Fingers Talisman and the Faithful's Canvas Talisman is giving me between 6 and 7% of a damage increase on my spells. Uh, I think that the scaling for the Two Fingers Talismans will change depending on how many points you have in Faith. So try the two out and see which one does better for you. The Godfrey Icon is really strong. It increased my spell damage by 15%, but it only affects the skills or spells that can be charged. And in this case, that's the Lightning Spear. So Hone Bolt and Lightning Strike aren't affected by this one. So I would use this only if you're using Lightning Spear quite a lot. If you're using the other two spells more often, then this probably isn't the best choice for you. The Scorpion Charm is a 12% increase, which is really good. Uh, but it does reduce your defenses a little bit, so keep that in mind. These talismans combined with Golden Vow are really strong. Golden Vow gives you another 12% damage buff. With all your talismans and Golden Vow and your mixed physic, you can increase your damage by around 50%. I tried using the Radigan icon with this build, but it's really only improving our cast speed by a tenth of a second, which for me isn't a big enough deal to justify using it. I'd rather just go with the flat damage I get from the other talismans. Maybe once the other spells open up later in the game, that'll change, but for now, I'm not gonna use it. As far as armor, you can wear just about anything you want. Um, the set that I really want for this, Ronin's set, isn't available until much later in the game. Uh, so once I get there, I'll be wearing it, but for now, I'm just wearing whatever I've picked up uh, that I can wear that doesn't result in me fat rolling. So how this build plays, uh, most of the time you're going to want to keep your distance with your spells. Your sword is dealing sacred damage, scaling off your faith, so it does pretty good damage. Once you do pick up that sanctified wet blade and you can enchant your weapon with any Ash of War you want, I like the Sword Dance Ash of War, which is pretty easy to pick up in Southwest Lyurnia from a Teardrop Scarab. This Ash of War is really good at closing distance, plus it deals three quick attacks that deal good damage with the option to deal a fourth heavy attack. But you can use whatever Ash of War suits your playstyle. Another popular one would be Thunderbolt, which you pick up once you're inside Landell. This is like a cheaper, faster, and weaker version of Hone Bolt. If you need a faster range attack than your incantations, this one will suit you pretty well. Difficulty wise, I'd say this is like a fairly easy to medium difficulty build as long as you're able to maintain range between you and the enemy you shouldn't have issues with most of the enemies and bosses that you come across one area where it does struggle a little bit is where you're not able to maintain distance or when your enemy has really strong ranged attacks all your casting spells take about two seconds which really slows you down when you're casting and so if you have a high mobility fight you might be relying more on your melee weapon than your incantations which is another reason why the katana is a good choice besides just being on theme for this build uh, there are some bosses where you you're not really going to have much time to cast and you're really going to rely on the bleed damage from your weapon to help take them down having a summon or a spirit with you on these fights is really useful because a lot of times they'll distract the boss so that you can stay at a distance while casting on them in cases where that's not possible, you're going to have a little bit more of a difficulty. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned because i got more builds coming. Hope you enjoyed it.